we worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be adored in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes, Lord. Can we just share this on our walls once again like we normally do? And let the name of the Lord be adored and worshipped. Let your name be worshipped. Let your name be glorified, Holy Spirit. We give you all exaltation and honor. We give you all glory. We give you all adoration. Have your way, O oh Lord, that your name will be glorified. In the name of Jesus. The word says, not of him that will it nor run it, but God is the one that showeth mercy. Begin to ask God for the blood to be upon your life now. Let something great begin to happen to you, something awesome. Let God be God and let his name be glorified in your life. Not just in your life, but in your family. Let God do everything. Lord, show your mightiness in us. Show your greatness in us. Be God in all that we do. Hallelujah. Let your name be glorified. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify you. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabaga Sikataba. Bless him. You are mightier than the mightiest. You are greater than the greatest, oh Lord. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God. I am that I am, ancient of days. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence. Today we are talking about divine approval, and there are things that will give you that divine approval. It's not just what you, you think, but God is a doer. He's a doing God. He's a dwelling spirit. Have you caught the fire yet? Jesus says something in the book of Revelation. He said, where is your first love? The love you had when you became a Christian, when you were called into the work that you are doing today when you're called into ministry, when you are called into marriage. Oh, Makata Kataba, where is that fire? The zeal that you had for God, where is it? Many of us, our fire is dwindling, but today God is bringing it back. I want you to say to yourself, God, bring back my fire because it must come back. I want to say some redundant word today, not that we don't understand or we don't hear, but I just want us to say it until we begin to understand it. We begin to believe it for ourselves because everything that you do with God, you must know it for yourself. Once you know it, the Bible says you shall know the truth. And the truth is what makes you free. It does not set you free. It makes you free. God is a maker. The Bible says let us make man in our image. So ask God to bring back that fire in you. Let the fire of God begin to burn again, burn again, burn again, burn again inside of you. Jesus told the man Nicodemus, he said you except a man be born again. And the man was looking at him thinking, what is this saying? Is this some kind of mystery or some kind of um, things that I don't understand? How can a man be born when he's old? But Jesus said, he said, a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. There is some burning that we need to be born today. Many of us are going to be born again, again. You go higher. Every time that you get into a place and you feel that your battery is low, I feel it in my spirit that a lot of you that are hearing the sound of my voice, some of our prayer partners, many of you, your battery is low. You have gotten to a place that you just begin to become complacent. You know, things have become numb with you. No, you have to catch that fire afresh. You have to begin to go higher again in the name of Jesus Christ. Ask God to increase the fire, the flame in you. Let it burn down. Let it burn you out that it will set you ablaze set you in a trail whereby you begin to do the things that are not comfortable anymore. Many of us are in our comfort zone in the things of God. And it's a trick of the enemy to keep you in a comfort zone. The moment you get to the place of comfortability, then you begin to lose your fire. You might not lose all of it, but I want you not to be in that state where you take your eyes off the ball. The devil is a crooked devil. I don't know how to explain it more. But that's what it is. It's a crooked devil. The word says, and you shall know the truth. 
and the truth shall make you free. La pogo sakata ba ba ba, makina mayika tashikotobo. I want you to begin to talk to God right now. Begin to appreciate Him, for He is God. There is none like Him. There is none that will be compared unto Him. He is God all by Himself. The Bible says He's a mighty God. God said in Jeremiah, "Is there anything that is hard for me to do?" It's a question that I posed to us yesterday. He said, "I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do?" So He's all possibility, all powerful, all great. Everything is God. He's all and all. Even where you think that God will not be, God is everywhere. The Bible says Jesus was speaking to the woman. He said, look, say God is a spirit. John chapter 4, 24. They that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So I want us to begin to adore that God that carries all, all potency. He is all and all. He's Alpha Omega. He is everything. He is the one that is, the one that is to come, and the one that was. He's present, past, and future. Hallelujah. That is the God we serve. God is in eternity. Eternity has no expiring time. Even though we try to say he's Alpha and Omega, God cannot begin and he does not end. Oh, Labagashi Katabari Kanamama, Mikoto Sokotobo, Rikaraba. Ask him for that fire to come back on you. The fire that burned down your community. The fire that made people to know who you are. The one that got you this far. You need a fresh fire. Say, Lord, give me a fresh anointing. Give me a fresh fire today. Fresh fire. Let it come upon me right now. Lord, release a fresh fire upon me. Is there anything standing on my way? Whatever it is. Is it my character? Is it what I have done before? Is is it the people I'm with? Is it where I'm hanging out? Is it where I am? Is it just that I'm lazy? Lord, take it away. Take it away. Put a fresh fire upon me. Let that fire burn right now. Oh, kanama shikoto bobobo. Rakita raba sikataba. The fire that when it set you on, in fact, you will know, your community will begin to know that something has happened again. That is the God that we serve. That is the God that we call. He is God of gods. The, the Bible said that God is the spirit that is above every spirit. Let the power of God come upon you right now. God, give me back my fire. Let the fire come back. I'm talking about divine approval. You can only be approved when fire come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The word said in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 35. But before then, the Bible said the entrance of the word give it light and understanding that fire it comes that is what the word brings it gives light and it gives understanding to the simple lord your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path let the word that we are speaking and hearing now not be an enticing word of a man but let it be the word of god that we bring glory unto thy holy name in the name of jesus Holy Spirit, give us utterance. We speak over this medium that we are communicating right now. We take over the airways and the byways and the freeways and the corner streets. We take over the city of Lebanon, the county of Gwinnett and the state of Georgia. We take over this country. Ah, Lakatasi Kotobo. We take over everywhere that you are standing upon in the Eurozone, in Asia, in Australia, in Africa, in the Middle East, ah, Lebogosa, South America. In New Zealand, every part of the world, wherever you are in the islands today, I speak light into you. Let the light of God come. The Bible says light shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for it is done. Give us utterance in Jesus' mighty name we pray. So John chapter 10, verse 35, that's where we are going to begin today. Hallelujah. Oh, la katasiko tobo. The Bible says, if he, if he called them gods, this is God now. Jesus said, if God called us God, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. So, if God call you God, it's a little children, don't you know that he are gods? In fact, in Psalm 82, the Bible says, and God, and the gods came, and God began to talk about the gods, which is Adam, and how Adam manifested himself. But he said, you shall die like men. Because he fell. Let that fire come back. If God call you God, 
the scripture cannot be broken. If God call you God, the scripture cannot be broken. This is, this is kind of what Jesus was just trying to communicate to us. Second Peter chapter one. If you look at oh Kanama Shikata Baba, chapter one, verse three and four, he said, according to his divine power, had given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. But look at verse four. He said, whereby I whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers. That's where I'm going. Of the divine nature. So there is a divine order. There's a divine nature in God. But you need a divine approval to live that nature. That we, may be, we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Many of you are escapees. God just gave you a window and we ran into it. The Bible said, Hakodobo Shakata Baba. The name of Jesus is the strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. That is where we anchored. We, we escaped something. The corruption and the lost and everything that is out there. Hallelujah. The loss of the flesh, the pride of life. We escaped, but we need a divine approval from God. How do you get that? Romans chapter 8 verse 2. He said, for the law of the spirit of life is Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus have made us free from the law of sin and death. That law that is Jesus Christ is what made us free. For the law of the spirit of life, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made us free. You remember when Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, B, he said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. There is a life that comes in you. It stays with you. But today you need a divine push. Many of us have heard the word of God. Some of us are even preaching the word of God now. Some of us have elevated into different ranks. We are called apostles and many of us are teachers. Some of us are called pastors and prophets. All these things are good, but it is only for the in-house. When we get out there, we are not coming as an apostle. We come in the name of the Lord. We come in his might. We are coming as ministers. Hallelujah. That is the only thing that we represent out there. We don't represent ourselves as apostles. We represent God as a minister. That's why the Bible says he has made his minister a flame of fire. You are coming out today to catch that fire again say god give me my fire back give me back my fire first corinthians chapter 9 25 he said and every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things when you want to be a master of something you don't wish it comes to you you don't just go and sleep you do you see what we are doing here every day you know and we do more than what we see because many of you just watch us as we come out every day but we don't just pray when we come out we pray sometimes throughout the whole day we are praying for other people. We are praying for different things. We are we are not asking for anything. We just go and pray. Oh, labaga shikataba. So sometimes you just have to go and pray. You just go into the presence of God and you stay there. You stay there, and it becomes a lifestyle until you get to the place where the hunger. The Bible says, "For they that are thirsty and hunger." Matthew five six. It says, "For they shall be filled." Until you are very hungry for God, you are you, the desire to do the will of God. Is, is more than any other thing. You know, you are like somebody that is under some spell. You are intoxicated. In fact, you are under a spell. Not some, not like under a spell. You are under a spell. The gospel is a gospel. When God spells you, you are going to be in that gospel. Why are you so afraid of the devil's spell? Go to God and receive the spell of God and carry the gospel to the world. In the name of Jesus, that's the greatest commission. If you don't carry that fire, oh, Kanama, Rabaga, whatever you have learned is not going to change anything. When Jesus came out, he preached. He preached the word of God. And people heard him. And Jesus had been around for 30 years. For 30 years. For 30 years with the wisdom that was trapped in that one man. With the level of might and counsel. Nobody heard from him. But when he went to baptism, and he was baptized in John chapter 3, and in Matthew chapter 3, the Bible said in Matthew 4, 
Alabagasiko to when Jesus came down from the mountain, the Bible said he began to speak with boldness, and everywhere he he went, there was an, a what we call a confirmation of the word with signs and wonders. Fire broke out in the city. Is it not the same Jesus that the brothers say go and preach? And he told them, No, I can't go into Jerusalem now. They say, What are you doing here? No man becomes great, no man becomes becomes something like um known in the in, in the closet. They told Jesus to come out. If you do all these things, show yourself to the world. They knew what was trapped in him. They knew what was in him. Many of you have you have gotten to the knowledge, you have the wisdom of God trapped in you, the knowledge of God, but it is not enough. Jesus told them that you can't even do the work of God if you are not confirmed, if you have not been divinely approved. There is a seal of divine approval that God will put upon you, which is the fire of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost manifests in different dimensions, I told you, but when you carry fire fire is like the embodiment of the the spirit of god god move in the coast of fire even the devil walk with fire but when the fire of the holy ghost comes to you it does not kill you it it preserves you and it gives you protection but when the devil brings fire upon your life it devours that man it kills the person and when literal fire come upon the person it destroys that person but that fire of the holy ghost is what i'm talking about say god give me back my fire Bring back your fire. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost come back in my life. Let it come back in my journey. Let it come back in my ministry, in my business. Whatever I do, may I begin to experience a divine, a seal of divine approval upon everything I do by Holy Ghost and fire. The Bible says how Jesus Christ, God anointed him with Holy Ghost and with fire that he went about doing good. He didn't just come out. He went out because there was a divine anointing that was upon him. He came out and was born in. Say, God, give me my fire back. Bring back my fire. That was what Jesus was trying to communicate to Nicodemus. Nicodemus have read the Bible before. He was a ruler of the Jews. The Bible said, for you to be a ruler of the Jews, you must know the Torah. You must recite it offhand. This man was full of wisdom. But when he came to Jesus, Jesus said, well, you need to be born again. Where you start to carry fire. The man said, I don't understand this dimension. What does that mean? Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, the wind blow it and we hear the sound, but we know it not where it comes from and where we're going. So it's every man that is born of the spirit. John chapter 3, verse 6 to 8. Hallelujah. So it's every man that is born of the spirit. There is, there is a, an aura of fire around you. Sometimes you don't even control what you do. God will just take control. Or God will take charge of you. And you just begin to burn. Say, God, give me my fire back. Oh, Lakata Sikataba. So, 1 Corinthians 9.25, we just say, every man that strives for, for, for mastery, for you to master anything, it is temperate in all things. You must practice. You must continue to do it. You must understand dimensions. That when you begin to do things, and you start to see results. There is something that you have discovered. There is something that has been revealed to you. That, that is what it makes the difference. It's not the knowledge to do the same business. Some people study and get apprenticeship for something, but they will do that thing in the basic way and they might get some basic result. But I'm talking about extraordinary results. When you begin to get things that are supernatural, it is not just that you have dangle into some wisdom or knowledge of man but this is a divine knowledge when god opened the portals of divine arrangement and begin to shower you with some kind of uh, anointing that it will bring you into a different place in life you don't need anything you begin to manipulate your own spirit that the devil cannot control you anymore you will be in the place whereby you want to do anything and your body is not willing to go that route you begin to change the formation. You, you manipulate yourself until you are ready to enter and begin to experience and ex, you know, and 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 and, and what what will I say? Begin to begin to explore that part of you. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. But all these things, you can only get it through prayer. Jesus said in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, he said, men ought always to pray and not faint. If you look at the book of um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19, when he gave us all the tools to fight demons and everything, and say, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able. But Jesus says something there. Written by Paul. Say, praying always with all prayer and supplication. That is the key. Praying always, not sometimes, always with all prayers and supplication. That is the key to keep the devil afar. And you wear fire like a cloth. That fire that you see that you carry is what keeps the devil abate from your life. Numbers chapter 12. Verse 6, we read down to it. The Bible said, and he said, How hear now my word, if there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make himself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. It will say, But my servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house with him. Will I speak mouth to mouth? Moses have downloaded a dimension. God said, every prophet that existed at that time, he said, I speak to them in a vision and in a dream. But there is something that Moses knew. There's something he knew that, that every other prophet or pastor or anybody that minister in that time did not know. See, with him, I speak mouth to mouth. Do you know what it means? This man has a lot of intimacy with God that they always have mouth to mouth. Mouth to mouth. Even apparently and not in the dark speeches and in the similitude of the Lord. Shall he behold therefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? He was not telling them. So you are not afraid to speak to this guy in a different way. This is a man that his brother Aaron and the sister prophet Tess Miriam and other people that conspired were talking about. He did not fight for himself. God came back and said, what? This is the man I speak to mouth to mouth. We have that relationship. This man carried fire all over him. And everybody that was involved were punished. Some of us are praying God is punished by enemy. But Moses did not even ask God to do anything but because of his relationship with God, because of the dimensions that he has sat. This is a man that would go to the mountain and stay there for 40 days. He would not remember food or drink or anything. And when he comes back, his, the whole of his body will be glory. You can't look upon him because there is a, there's a, there's a, a portal that he has discovered. There's, there's a dimension of God he knew that when he gets there, he just go up and stay up. Oh, Labagasikataba, somebody, your eyes will open today. You have been in the kingdom. You have worked. You have been in ministry for a while, doing business or whatever you are doing. But it's time to go higher. It is time to go higher. That even the devil, when the devil hear about you, he will, he, will, he will just shake. Look at the devil. The devil, God even judged him when he sinned against God, God himself. In Ezekiel 28, God told him, the same fire that I give to you, I will use it to destroy you. That was what God said. If you look at Ezekiel 28 verse 17, he said, thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. He's talking about Lucifer himself. Thou had corrupted thy wisdom. So he was a wise, wise angel. Thy wisdom by reason of brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Ah, verse 18, the, God began to pronounce judgment. He said that thou had defied thy sanctuary by the multitude of thy iniquities. By the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the mix of thee. God said you carry fire, but that fire will burn you down. I will bring fire from your mix. It shall devour thee. I will bring thee to ash upon the earth. In the sight of all them that behold him. God is telling the devil. So we know what the judgment of the enemy has been. The judgment has been confirmed. God has judged the devil. God has placed him where he's supposed to be. Hallelujah. But you will need to carry that fire. The devil threatened people with fire. That's what he has. I want you to see it again. Ezekiel 28. 
God was telling the devil to his face, say, look, the same fire that I gave you, I will use it to consume you. The seal of our, our divine approval is fire. I don't care how many of wisdom of God you have received or the eloquence of God or the word of God. If you don't carry fire, sometimes your battery will begin to run low. I was talking to one of my sisters today in the spirit. And she told me, say, man of God, I need to go to the mountain. I said, what is going on? She said, I've been pouring out and my battery is running low. Oh, that, 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 that blessed me. He said, my battery is long, running low. I know it. I feel it. I want to go away for some days. I just want to stay in the mountain. That when I come back, I recharge myself. A lot of Christians are like that. We have, we are born out. We are, we are, we are so involved in a lot of things. It's not that we are sinned against God, but we have exhausted ourselves. We need to recharge today. Let the fire of God come upon you back. So the devil, God told him, say, thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou had corrupted thy wisdom. Ezekiel 28 to 17. By the reason of thy brightness, because it was bright. He said, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. God said, the people that you are bragging for, they will see you. In verse 18, God began to put judgment to the devil. So we know what the end will be with the enemy. He said, thou had defied thy sanctuary by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquities of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring forth fire from thy mix. The devil carry fire. He walks as a cherubim. God said, that fire, I will bring it out from you. It shall devour thee. And I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. So we know what judgment will be at the end. We know that the fire is what God will use, but there is a fire that you must carry today. There is a fire that you must receive. That one is the one that preserves. The fire of the Holy Ghost, it keeps you calm. You must receive it. You must receive fire. You must receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Look at Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7. I don't care how you go out, whether you go out as a bishop or an apostle or some great man of God, so whatever your title is but the bible says when you go out there you don't come in the name of your title you come in the name of the lord hebrews 1 7 the bible says, and of the angels hallelujah he said who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire every time you wear the robe of god and you go out there to minister you are coming as fire that is the fire that burns, that converts people. You see, sometimes when you come and tell people about repentance and you come with wisdom and you come with trick, you try to reason with them. Many times they hear you, they love what you say. They, they, they want to change, but they can't. But when the fire of God is burning, the Bible said he made his angels, hallelujah, spirits and his ministers, flames of fire. You come out, you, people are looking at you, but they are seeing the ray of fire. That when you begin to speak to them, it goes into their bones and their marrows and their arteries. It pierces into their heart and begins to transform them. That there is a force that you carry that will change life and bring people to the knowledge of Christ. That is what I'm talking about. Tell God to give you back your fire. If your battery is running low, like that sister told you today, ask God to recharge you. Let your fire come back. Oh, Kanama Sikotobo. He said, and his minister is a flame of fire. Say, God, let me represent you as fire. Give me the grace to come out as fire. Let my fire begin to burn again. Today we are talking about the seal of divine approval. There is a seal that God puts upon you when you go out there to do work. That's why you can tell demons, say, get out. That we go, not because of you, but there's a seal that you carry, which is fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost, when it comes, it burns down the city. When the apostles, they were gathered in the upper room, about 120 people. They came down on the day of Pentecost. The Bible said they preached in that one day. Over 3,000 people gave their life to Christ. And they began to burn down city to city. Everywhere they entered, one man will take up a city. Today, I begin to pray that the grace of God come back to you like that. Let the revival burn out of you. Many of us are praying, God, God. Bring back revival to America. The revival starts with a man. One man can change the whole of this world. It was one man that said that America will speak English. One man. 
America became an English nation. It's supposed to be a French nation. One man, one man, one man gave this country a name. One man. God is looking for a man, a woman, a person. When I say a man, I'm talking about a human being. One that can stand in the gap. Let the revival break out in you. That it burns from you and burns out. Let us ask God to bring the fire. If we can have 10 people in different places, 20 people, 30, 100, 200, 1,000, it doesn't matter that we carry the fire of God. The city will be transformed. Jesus told them they can't preach and they thought it was a joke. In, in, in the book of Luke chapter 24, in verse 49, he said, tarry you in Jerusalem until you are endued with fire, until you are endued with power. And they don't understand what that dimension was. But Jesus said, wait, until you receive something. In Acts chapter 1, he told them in verse 4, wait for the promise in the city of Jerusalem. And in verse 8, he said, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So they were expecting something. These guys have been with him for three and a half years. Eventually, they have seen him do, do everything. So they have, if you say they want to copy him, they have all part of him. But Jesus said, you can't do it. There's something that must come upon you. In Acts chapter 2, oh, rakata riko tobo sakata ba ba ba, makono mo yakata shakata ba. In verse 2, the Bible says, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting, and they were appear upon them, clothing tongues like fire, and it sat upon each of them. Something burst into the room. The Bible says in verse 4, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Many of us, we just begin to speak things that are not making sense. There is no utterance. We just open our mouth. Wait for the fire. Let it come upon you. You have gone to Bible school. You have been trained. You have understood a man of God. You are working in a ministry. You are a pastor. You have a congregation, but you don't have fire. Until the fire come, that is, that is the, the that, that that is the seal of divine approval. When it comes upon you, you will be approved for to do something. The sons of Skiffers they thought their number was it. Might is power. That's what they say. There were seven sons of Skiffers, and they came to one man that was mad, and they say, "We are going to bind you in the name of Jesus Christ." That that Paul preached. Oh, makata sakataba. The man looked at them. He said, "Paul, I know Jesus. I know who are you." There was no divine approval, even though they had, they had the right word, they mentioned the right name. And many of us have been mentioning the same name. We have prayed in our closets, we have prayed in the public, we have prayed all for things to change, and nothing has changed. You need to receive fire. Say, God, give me back my fire. Let fire come back upon me. Let your fire burn in me. In the name of Jesus, begin to speak. Say, God, I need fire. I need fire. That is what will. I, I, I approve you. When the disciples were gathered there, they didn't know what they were expecting. Jesus said, wait. Tarry in Jerusalem. Even though you have read the Bible, you know how to speak. You know, understand doc doctrines and dogmas. You understand administration. But he said, wait. Wait in Jerusalem until something come upon you. You can't do it by yourself. Paul said, no man called Jesus Christ a cost. Oh, can I, my mama? No man preached the word and called Jesus a cause. He said, and no man can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. You have to receive this fire. If it is not in you yet, ask God. Jesus told Nicodemus, Nicodemus was not an unbeliever. Many of us thought that that, that that place we can use it to preach to unbelievers because they don't know. But when you are talking to people that have studied the word, Nicodemus was a, a man that understands the Torah. The Bible says he was a ruler of the Jews. He knew the word of God. But he has some dimension that he heard Jesus preach. The man didn't understand it. He don't want to make a fool of himself in the public. He came to Jesus by night. In John chapter 3, he began to ask questions. He said, this thing you are saying, how can this be? And Jesus said, well, except the man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom. To be born again is to perceive, to begin to see things, to understand things. The man said, well, what, what is this? How can a man be born? Or can I go back to the womb and be born? Jesus said, no. Born again is still lower. Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. And the man now was confused. Jesus said, well, he, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that is which is born of the spirit is spirit. He said, the wind bloweth, and we hear the sound. 
but we know it not where it is coming from and where it is going. So is every man that is born of the spirit. When the man or a woman, when you are on the spirit, when you are born of the spirit, things just begin to uh, irritate you. You come into a place of corruption. It doesn't matter. Everybody is stealing and taking bribe, committing sin. You will be, you will be very angry with sin. That will not make you to hate the sinner, but to, but you will hate their attitude. You, you 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 stay in a place. Nobody can influence you when you are a man that carry fire. Even the devil melts in fire. Look at what God told the devil. I want to repeat it here again. I said it before. Ezekiel twenty eight, verse seventeen and eighteen. The Bible says God told the devil, "Say you are beautiful, you are wise, you are bright, you have all these abilities. You got wisdom in you, but you have committed iniquity." In verse eighteen, He said, "Thou hast defiled thy sanctuary." By the multitude of thy iniquity, by the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore, I will bring forth fire from the midst of thee. The devil is created with fire. He walks in the flames and in the mix of um, the cold of fire. He was a cherubim and a seraphim. But God said, that fire that I give you, I will use that fire to devour. He said, it shall devour thee. I will bring forth fire from the mix of you. I will bring fire out of you and use it to kill you. It shall devour thee. I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All the bright men, and we hear about how great the devil is. God said, I will use the fire that I gave him to kill him. We know what the end will be. God will destroy the heaven and earth with fire. He said, there shall be a new heaven. This one will be rolled out. Fire will consume it. But the same fire, God will put it in a man. It will not kill you. It will preserve you. It will protect you. When God took the children of Israel for that journey from Egypt to the promised land, the Bible says he put a, 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 a flame of fire around about them. That in the night, they are walking in the pillar of fire. And in the day, pillar of cloud. Fire was directing them. The fire of God preserved. When the disciples were in that upper room in Acts chapter 1, chapter, chapter 2, the Bible says, and it came upon them like a rushing mighty wind, tongues of fire upon their head. Everyone saw each other carry fire. Today, what is happening in church? Church has become a place of comedy. We come and talk stories and people laugh and we go home and nothing is changing. A lot of people are just in the same category where they are. Nothing is changing in their life. Even their life cannot be approved. Their life cannot be better because the fire is gone. We have the wisdom. We all know how to speak the good languages. We know how to manipulate words and speak it and it comes, it sounds very well. But we are talking about the, the efficacy of the spirit of God that we carry. The, 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 the efficacy of the word that we speak. The Bible said, oh, Labaga, Jesus said to them in the, in the book of, I think, John chapter 6, 63 or so. He said, the word I speak to you, they are spirit and they are fire. They are light. The word I speak to you, they carry spirit and they carry life. They carry fire, fire born in that word. He said, all the ministers of God are fire, flames of fire. Hebrews 1, 7. And the angels said, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers flame of fire. If God has made you a flame of fire, where have you burned down? That fire should be taking territories. Look at the book of Romans chapter 12. That is the one we must do every day. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. He said, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercy, Paul was even begging of God, that we present your body a living sacrifice holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. When you present your physical body in that altar of God as a living sacrifice, the fire will come upon it. Ah, like a bo, bo, bo. Present your body, present yourself into God as a living sacrifice. Every day you come as a holocaust. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost consume you. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. Don't say, I know. I know what to do. The devil is a crooked devil. It's an old, rugged devil. He's a lawyer. He knows how to argue case. He has wisdom in him. He was bright. The Bible says, God says, he's beautiful. All these qualities, you can't outsmart the devil. But go in the might of God. Be a fool to submit to God so that God will believe in you. The Bible says Christ in us, the hope of glory. When you carry Jesus, you come 
come out with fire. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with fire, that he went about doing good. Romans chapter 10, 38. He went out and was doing good. There was an anointing of Holy Ghost and fire upon him. Let it come upon you right now. Let it come upon you right now. Receive that anointing. Burn down the cities around you. Begin to burn your community. Burn among your friends. You don't even violently do it. You show up because of the aura of God in you. Things around you begin to change. On its own, God will begin to change everything. The status quo will begin to fall apart. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we are going to pray. Second Timothy chapter 2. Look at verse 19. He said, nevertheless, the foundation of God stand sure. So when you are standing on that foundation, it's a sure one. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also wood and earth and some honor and some to dishonor. But look at verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctify and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. 2 Timothy 2.21 If a man purge himself, so purge yourself today. Let God purge you out. Divine approval, purge out every flesh in you so that you come as refined gold. You come as, as, as a flame of fire. You come out as glittering as what God wants you to do. You become a vessel of honor, a vessel that is prepared for use. Let God use me. God, give me my fire back. Thank you, Jesus. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, and I will bring the third part through fire. God is bringing something out of us. But fire must be involved. And we bring refined and will refine them as silver is refined, and I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call upon my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my Lord. God is bringing you with fire. I will bring the third part through the fire. Are you among those that God will bring through the fire? Say, God, bring me through your fire. Bring me through the fire. Bring me. Kakadarabagaga. Yikana my mama. Bring me through the fire. And that is when you say you can call. Do you know that some people, they have become Christians. Some are pastors, apostles, bishops. Like the lady was talking to me today. She's a minister. I know her. And I, I was talking to her. We we're trying to just share some things. And she told me, say, man of God, I feel that my battery is running low. Some men of God, they don't even have any life in their battery anymore. So when you are in that aura, you pray. Your prayers are not answered. God say, I will bring the third part through fire and will refine them as silver is refined. Go back to God. Say, God, refine me as silver is refined. And I will try them. When he refined you, then he will try you. That is testing. He will test you as gold is tested. How do you test gold? Put it through fire. It will burn. He said, they shall call upon my... That is when you begin to call him. And he will hear them and will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. Can you comfortably say the Lord is my God? Have you been tried by fire? Bring me through your fire, O oh Lord. Take me back into that place of refining. Refine me. Refine me as silver is refined. Try me as gold is tried today. Burn me out. It's a conscious decision. And when you do that, God will be glorified in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. Hebrews 12, 28 and 29. It's a wherefore we receiving a kingdom is a present continuous. 
which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. I want you to read it again. Hebrews chapter 12, 28. So look at our part. Our part is wherefore we are, we receive it. We are receiving now a kingdom which cannot be moved. It's an unshakable kingdom. The kingdom is guaranteed. It is placed where it's supposed to be. He said, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with what reverence, with fear, with trembling, with godly fear. Say, for our God is a consuming fire. God is not a man. Jesus said to the woman, oh, Magasakataba, our God is a spirit. And they that must worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Our God is a consuming fire. Say, God, give me that fire. The fire that God uses to consume, that same fire, when it comes upon you, it preserves you. Lord, give me your fire. Jesus said, where is, my, where, is, where, is, where is your first love? Let your fire come upon me right now. Begin to pray that prayer. You know, this is not about give me a house, a car. There are some things when you receive it, it gives you every other thing. When you have a seal of divine approval, whatever other things you are looking for shall come. Matthew 6, 33, just confirmed that. Jesus said, seek forth the kingdom and its righteousness, and all these things shall be added. So we don't have to ask for the addition. We have to ask for the thing that is very, very important, the things that brings everything. God, give me fire. That is the kingdom of God. Give me fire. Lord, that I will go out and begin to do evangelism again. Many of you, you used to be crazy for God. You used to be mad for him. That's zeal. Where is it? Oh, where is your first love? Tell God, say, give me your fire back. The fire that will set me out. I begin to pray for people. Deliver them. All the kind, the, the will of God that you do out here. Many of us, our, our, our zeal is going down. Let your battery not die. Let it not go down. Let God recharge you today. Refire you. If you have a desire, do not retire. Refire until you acquire that desire. Today, I ask that the energetic power of God come upon you. Like Jesus said to them, and you shall receive power. Receive the Holy Ghost right now. Receive the fire of the Holy Ghost that will begin to put you back and set you ablaze. That you begin to burn in a city and burn for God. That the whole city will come and watch you. They will come to you because of the power. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord shall be risen upon you. The Bible says there shall be darkness upon the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen in you. Now the Gentiles will begin to come to thy rising and the kings shall come to the brightness of thy rising. Begin to rise now. Say fire come upon me. Holy Ghost fire possess me. Father take over my life. Take over my ministry, my business, my job. Lord I tried to do it, I couldn't. Lord, you are the lead. I yield unto you today. I commit myself, my family. I commit our ministry, our members, everyone in between. Unto thy hand, Lord, be our guide. Lead us. You are our overseer. We just have to follow you. Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. We are following you today. We are recommitting our commitment. We ask all of us as we yield ourselves today, come into us. Holy Spirit, take us by the hand. For the Bible said, there that are led by the Spirit, they are called the sons of God. Romans chapter 8, 14. Lead us again. For the Bible says the spirit is of God. If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, that same spirit shall quicken thy mortal body. Romans 11. Lord, quicken us today. In the name of Jesus, quicken our mortal body. Bring back life to us. Jesus said, I come that they may have life and have it in abundance. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for we have received the fire. Thank you for we have received the spirit. Lord, let it begin to burn. Some of us, our fire will begin to catch a little now and it start to expand shit and begin to become a mighty fire. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon you right now. To transform your life, transform your community, your family, transform everything around you. Let the fire burn down every in things that are not wanted that you begin to become the divine approved of God. The seal of divine approval come upon you right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. That everywhere you stand, 
the words that you speak, they will come with fire. They will come with fire. They will come with fire. Oh, la baga shikata ba 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 ba. Makotorobo la kata shikata ba ba ba. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. Hallelujah. Before we leave, I want to pray for some people that are sick in the body. Whatever is going on in your life, and if your fire has gone down, I want to pray with you right now. I want you to put your hand upon your head as I pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to your daughter and to your son and everyone that will hear this message. Oh, Lord, Father, in, 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 in the future, in ritual, they will let the power of God come upon them right now. I speak fire. Lord, heal your daughter. Every brokenheartedness, Lord, remove it right now. Every stony heart, every unforgiveness, let it go. Let fire come upon them right now. In the name of Jesus, heal your daughter, all of her. Heal her from every brokenness. Heal her right now. Lord, she shall be healed. I pray for you right now. Every man or woman that have heard the sound of my voice, receive the fire of the Holy Ghost. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it by the power and the authority in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are sick in the body or any form, as you put your hand upon your head, I speak life and healing upon you, divine healing. Let it come upon you right now. Remove every every kind of cell in your body. Whatever the devil has not has put in you that the de God has not planted, it shall be uprooted right now. Whatever is called sickness or infirmity or any lifestyle or character, whatever the devil has tried to use to keep you bound, oh, let them go. We speak unto it that the Bible says, Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Stand and defend the church. For you are the embodiment of Christ. You are a custodian of the word of God. Don't let the devil steal your shine. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Whatsoever is not going right, some of you are going through a lot. You need financial upliftment. You need to be blessed. I cause the earth to send your blessings from the north, south, east, and west. You are blessed today. Let men bless you. Let women bless you. Everything that will cause you to move forward, I cause them to come to you right now. Receive them. In the name of Jesus, I send to you the dews of heaven. Oh, Lord, as the sun shines every day and as the moon comes out in the night, so shall your blessings come day and night. You will never lack any good thing. Like Otorobos, the Bible says the blessings of God, it make it rich and added no sorrow. Let the blessings that will add no sorrow come upon you. Receive it now and God grant you peace in all that you do. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for it is done now. In the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. In the name of Jesus. If you are here today, you have not received Jesus Christ. You are one of the reasons that we keep coming. I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you today. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. Hallelujah. I will see you all tomorrow as we continue to wait upon the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.